An interesting interface is the alarming meters interface. It's up here in the upper left hand corner, so let's click on it and allow it to load. We notice that it has two square meters, toggle switches and some buttons, and at the very bottom we have our standard menu controls that we've examined in the standard interface. If you haven't looked at the standard interface video, I welcome you to do that because all of these uh, buttons and text boxes and so forth are covered very thoroughly in that video. Uh, what we want to do now is uh, start some plotting. So come down here. Uh, we have our COM port, COM20, and our baud rate, 9600 baud, all set up. All we need to do is simply uh, click on the rocker switch and that gets our plotting started. Right now we're plotting 8 channels of digital data and 10 channels of analog sine wave data. But for this interface we want to just concentrate on the analog signal so let's get rid of our digital data. Let's come up here to the view menu and come down to display digital and we notice that it's checked, so let's uncheck it. And the digital data is gone. Let's review that. Our digital display check mark is not there anymore, and we're only displaying analog data. Now since we're plotting analog data, and we only have two meters that are monitoring channel 0 and channel 1, Let's get rid of some of the data plots. We do that by coming up here to our configuration menu, the one with the pencil icon. Come down here to the colors and scales tab, which is already up. And then let's uncheck all the channels that we don't want, which are really channel 2 through channel 9. So let's uncheck those. And as we see here at the bottom, the only channels left are channel 0 and channel 1. Channel 0 is the black plot and uh, channel 1 is the red plot. So we can drop our configuration menu right now. And one of the features that we have on our meters at the right hand side is a button that says set meter to Y scale. Well, right now the Y scale is set from 0 to 1000. And our meter, if you can look at it, is set from 0 to 250. So if we want to have our meter scale set to the Y scale, all we need to do is click this particular button. And now our meter scale is going from 0 to 1000. The scale that we have for the analog channels is really a bit too large, so let's come down here to the y-axis and let's say have the plot to make it go from instead of 0 to 1000, in this case 0 to 500. Now we can come back up here to our meter, click our y scale again, and now we have our meter set to our Y scale, which is now going from uh, 0 to 500. So that's the application for the set meter to Y scale button. We can always change the meter to make it fit whatever Y scale we happen to have. One of the main parts of the meter is the alarm feature. And as we see on the top meter, we have a long line, a long red line, indicating a maximum alarm value. And on the bottom meter, we have a shorter line, indicating a minimum alarm setting. Now both meters can have a maximum and a minimum alarm setting. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but let's see what happens with these particular alarm settings that we have on the meters right now. Come along here and click on our alarm enable toggle switch. And we see that we set off the maximum alarm on channel 0. And if you were paying attention, the channel 0 label 
changed from a green, which it is right now, to a red when the alarm condition hit. And it's going to hit again, so let's watch it. Okay, and that's just one of the WAV files that uh, we can use to actually enunciate this particular alarm. Let's turn off the alarm enable for this meter and come down here to channel 1 and we'll turn it on. And it'll be a little bit before the, the sine wave actually gets to the minimum value, but it will happen. And again, our channel label is green. There it went to uh, red briefly. So that's really how we can enable our alarm settings. And that is by clicking on these particular toggle switches. An important feature of our meters is the drop down menu that we can access just by right clicking on it. We're given a hint right up here that says right click meters for configuration menu so let's do that and here we see a list of things that we can uh, actually change to affect this particular meters performance let's go through them one at a time this is scale max and scale min right now we are scaled between 0 and 500 on our meter but we can change that let's go to scale max and let's do something like 300 Okay, we'll keep in 300. And now our meter settings change from 0 to 500 to now 0 to 300. Uh, we can also change the minimum value, but we'll leave that, that at 0. Uh, auto channel 0 means that we are tracking analog channel 0, so we'll leave that there. But we can click on that and key in any channel that we want from 0 to 99. But we have to recall that uh, we only have uh, 10 displayable channels of analog data, and those go from 0 to 9. So generally, it's going to be a value of uh, between 0 and 9. Auto enable needs to be checked at all times for this meter to react to the swings of analog channel 0. So we want to leave that checked. Alarm max and alarm min, those are the things we've just been talking about. Our alarm max was set previously uh, for this interface, but we can reset it. Let's just uh, change the alarm maximum from what it is now to, oh, let's say something like 150. Okay, there we are. Our alarm max has changed to 150. And we can come in and put an alarm minimum in there too. And let's say we're going to make it half 75. Click the OK. And now we see we have uh, two needle pointers, uh, a long one and a short one. The long one for the maximum and the short one for the minimum. And anything below the minimum or above the maximum, we will, will trigger an alarm condition if it's set. The alarm sound. OK, we can change that from what it is now. We can come down here to our sounds folder. And we'll pick one of many of the WAV files that we have here. One that I know uh, we have right now is our dive. That's our typical submarine dive, dive, dive type of a uh, WAV file. We can come up here and click on beep. And we will now uh, change our alarm setting to a beep rather than uh, the dive alarm sound. We can also change our label to something else. Right now it's set to channel 0, but we can say analog 1, just for an example, rather analog 0. Let's make it analog 0 to be consistent. All right, now our, la our label for our meter is analog 0. So that's how easy it is to change there. The major ticks and the minor ticks represent the little tick marks on the meter scales that you can change and you can change them from whatever they are now to something else just uh, change major ticks from where whatever it is now to let's say three 
All right, so there is a representation of the major ticks uh, changed to three. Uh, let's go back and change that back to, let's say, six. Okay, we click six, and now we're back to something that looks a little bit more normal. Color. This is interesting. We can change the background color of our meters. For example, right now we're sitting at a blue-gray, but we can change it to gray. Or we can come in here, back to color, change it to a blue, change it to something else like a green, and so forth, even down to an orange or a white. Let's go to a white color. Uh, the decimal values here can be either no formatting or 0, 1, 2, or 3 places after the decimal. Right now we have one place after the decimal. Let's just try two places. And there we have two places after the decimal. And then finally, pop off menu off, or pop up menu off. If you click this, we're never going to be able to see this pull down menu again. But if you have an application that you don't want your user to have access to this pull-down menu, then simply click this and you won't see this menu again. And this is a brief overview of the drop-down meter function. Let's turn on our alarm enable and see what happens. All right, we're in the good zone now, but let's see what happens. There's our beep. Reset. Not exactly a dramatic alarm sound, but nevertheless, that's what we chose. Then we'll let it go through the good setting. And here it is. We're going to exceed the alarm on the maximum side. So we get our beeping again. Then finally, down at the bottom here below the second meter, we have a text box that right now says max in it, but it says here we can mark the plot with text plotting if we want to just by double clicking anywhere on the plot area. And while I'm at it, let me turn off the alarm. Okay, the alarm on meter zero is off. So if we come here to the plot, we can double click and there is a marker anywhere we double click. And right now it says max, we can change this to anything we want, like mark, mark this. So let's say we want to mark the point where this analog channel just began to go negative again. Uh, one thing we have to realize is that uh, these marks are only good for the, the screen until it refreshes. And as you see here, once screen refreshes, they're gone. But nevertheless, what you can do is you can capture the marks on snapshots, and that's one way of archiving them, if you will. So in effect, this is our alarming meters interface. It's a very interesting way to present the data in both the plotting mode and also in a graphical meter mode. So we welcome you to look at the other interfaces with the other meters. But remember what you've learned here with the alarming meters because it applies to all of the meters that you'll see on the other interfaces.